Welcome one more time to the house of Dua. I'm sure you didn't receive your gift of our video for yesterday. We had to skip yesterday to give you time to go through the avalanche of videos that we have sent to you in the last 30 days. Yes, this is a very gigantic program, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. We are not trying to bore you. We are not trying to eat up your data. We are trying to encourage you to be involved, actively involved in God consciousness. Remembering that you are in this planet at the instance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created you, he sustains you, he controls you. And whether you like it or not, you are going back to him for accountability. He is your creator. He knows best what is good for you. And if you sincerely follow what he has asked you to do, then of course, life will be easy for you. If you stay away from what he asks you to stay away from, then of course, life will be easy for you. This is why we have spent the enormous time to come day after day to you with these revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can be guided. In order for you to live good life, in the life we live now and in the life that is yet to come. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome one more time to the House of Dua, the channel from which you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about his creation, about his message and his messenger, and about his chosen religion of Islam. This is also the channel from which you learn how to reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your supplications. All of us cannot do without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need him. There are many things we cannot do on our own. In spite of the capabilities he had endowed us with, we still cannot do many things. We need him in our lives. This is the channel from which you learn how to do that, how to reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best way for you to do that is to do what Allah asks you to do and to stay away from his prohibition. This is also the channel from which you learn how to succeed in the life we live now and how to succeed even better when we meet Allah on the day of accountability. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah is your creator, your sustainer, your provider, your curer, the one to whom you shall return for accountability after your stay on this planet. This is the one you are in this world to worship. If you want to be an engineer or a contractor or a politician, whatever you want to be, that's for your self-service. That's for your own benefit. But what belongs to Allah is your worship. It's your belief in him. It's your trust in him. It's for you to know that he's watching you over how you play the roles you are playing even to serve yourself. He definitely will hold you accountable. That's why it's important for us to be God conscious, to help us achieve that God consciousness. That's why we are becoming to you day after day with this video presentation. It's not as if we have nothing doing. We have a lot of stuff to do. But this is what we believe has the greatest benefit to all of us. That's why we are doing it. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, watch the videos. Share them with your friends. Not only that, Ask yourself, what have I learned from this video? What was I doing before that has been condemned by the message of Allah? Then stay away from it. What was I doing before that has been extolled, that has been described to be good in the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Continue to do such things. Yes. If you do so, trust me, all the problems you have been having will disappear. Indeed, we know that many of us are struggling. We are struggling because we stay away from this guidance. We are struggling because we break the commandments in this guidance. That is why. If only you can live by the code of conduct established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, then you will be a happier person. Yes, test it. Try it. You will be convinced that this is the right way to go. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in our last presentation, we came to you with verses 90 to 93 of Surah al maidah Surah al maidah is chapter 5 of the Quran. In that verse, Allah says, 
na malika mo ro wole me se ro wole a so abo wole azla mo re ji sun min amelin shaitan fajtani bo la lokun to fole ho la hokbal kabir all of us want to be successful in life we also want to be successful when we meet Allah on the day of accountability those who we say that day Alhamdulillah, he lazy had an ally has our macoon, ally not to the Allah, had an Allah. All the praises for Allah who has guided us thus far, for without Him, we couldn't guide ourselves. We want to be on the side of those who will say so that day. That's why we are bringing you all this presentation. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by the definition of success which you want in the life we live now in the Akhirah. You need to stay away from certain things. That's why he brought this verse, the verse that completely allows our mind to fall major categories of sinfulness. Things you will do, you will earn the anger of Allah. And if you earn the anger of Allah, then of course, you are locked out. Your supplications will no longer reach him. Then his blessings will no longer come upon you. That's why you will be struggling. That's the part to struggle right there. My dear brothers and sisters, these are four major, major sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has condemned in this verse. And it says, Vajtanibu, stay away from them. The first among them is al khamr intoxicants. That's what the last presentation was all about. But today we are taking a step further to take a look at other ones that have been mentioned. al -Mesir. For example, games of chance. Many of us are involved in that. To call it gambling alone is not sufficient. There are other games of chance that we engage in. Whether you call it scratch off, whether you call it uh, betting. There are some of us, when they are playing soccer, they want to bet. Bet with 10 naira, 10 dollar, 10 pounds, so that whoever wins, you get money. That's a, a form of gambling. It's a form of game of chance. Therefore, we need to stay away from it. Today, we are focusing on Al-Azlam and Al-Ansab. Al-Ansab is the practice of worshipping idols and sacrificing for such idols. Al-Azlam is the practice of using arrows or any other form, maybe fingers, maybe ropes that are tied together or knots, to seek understanding of the future, to interpret what is going to come. To seek to tell somebody, you know, this is going to happen to you. That's what we call seeking divination. These are prohibited, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. If you are engaged in any of them, you definitely will struggle in life. That's why we want to warn you about it. The issue of divination and sacrificing for idols, yes, there are many of us who are involved in it. There are many people who are still in the darkness, who are worshipping fetish objects. Dead objects, that's why they are called ansab. They are dead, they are motionless. There are people that have carved some objects in form of human beings, installed them somewhere and call them what? Shrine, or juju, or a bo, or statutes in English. They call them all kinds of names. They are motionless, they are senseless, they are lifeless. And still, people go there and pay homage to them, thinking that those things can intervene for them when they are sick or they need something, thinking that those things can help them. They worship them and call them their gods or their intermediaries towards God. It is wrong. It is condemned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the core of sinfulness, for which reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers after messengers to tell us, Allah tabudu elela. Don't worship any other thing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who sacrifice for idols, why do they do so? Because they worship those idols. They believe that those idols can intervene for them. They believe that those idols can benefit them. Allah said, no. La ya do rukun wa la ya They can't harm you and they cannot help you. So stay away from them. Staying away from them is the best thing for a believer, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore call all of them. Rejison. Min amelin shaitan. These are religious, abominable stuff, hateful stuff, odious stuff, things that are gross. How do you call an inanimate object an object of your worship? 
No, stay away from it. Five-star neighbor, oh, no water, I say, run away from them. La, look on to follow home so that you will be successful. My dear brothers and sisters, there are some of us, before they leave their home in the morning, there's a piece of stone somewhere or a piece of carving somewhere, anything somewhere. They go there, they bow before they leave home or they do some incantations or they give some food to that thing. Why do they do so? Because they owe loyalty to such things. It could even be a photograph of your dead father or anybody else. It could even be the graveyard of your ancestors. It could be a big tree at the center of your community. It could be a river. After bowing towards those idols or worshiping them in the way they think is fit for them, they follow up by sacrificing some stuff. Many occasions in Africa, at the road intersection, when you get there, you find a plate of food laid down there in the name of idols. Of course, who is going to eat those food? Idol cannot even move. But that food becomes the benefit of lizards and ants and rodents and rabbits. It's a wasted effort. You are wasting your time. Call on Allah, your creator, your source, and your provider, your cure, are the one to whom you shall return for accountability after your stay on this planet. That's the one you need to worship, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. That's why this verse is very important. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us about what we consume and what we owe loyalty to. Yes, stay away from alcoholism and drug abuse, games of chance. The money you will use to feed your family, you go and throw it away. And then you come back home, you are mad at your family. Betting on something you don't invest in. You are always speculating. You are always hoping or believing that luck will fall. A chance factor in your life. It doesn't work that way, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah's brand on what Allah say, you have to make effort. We have created you to make effort. Yes, we have created man to go and toil. You must make effort before you can eat. So stay away from games of chance. Stay away from ansab, that is, idol worshipping, including sacrificing for such idols. And stay away from al-Aslam, that is, seeking divinations by the use of different methods, either by the use of arrows or by the use of your palms or by the use of uh, ropes and sticks or by the use of the idols themselves. Stay away from them. Whoever follows such things is in darkness. They can't help you. That's why Ibrahim asks his people, why are you worshipping those? <laughs> Malaya, Turuku, Olaya, Fouku. Why are you worshipping those things that cannot be of benefit to you and cannot harm you? Why? Malaya is more. Who cannot hear? Ola Yubusir. They cannot see. Ola Yuguni An Kashi An. And they cannot even be of benefit to you. They can't save you from any harm. Why are you worshipping them? My dear brothers and sisters, in, in the same surah Al Maida, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a verse, verse 3, in which, among other things, he talks about the need for us to stay away from eating products that are sacrificed for these idols. Amazing. Allah's man of what Allah said, look, prohibited for you are a set of meat products that come from different violent way of slaughtering animals. Whether you spear the animal to death or you hang the animal or you beat it to death or you stone it to death, prohibited for us. Also prohibited are animals or meat products that come from animals that have been slaughtered for altars or immovable dead objects that are called shrine, ebo, juju, statutes, they are forbidden. The same thing with animals that have been slaughtered for the purpose of seeking divination. One has learned. All this one, fish, core, they are abominations. Actually, 
al fahsha also shameful behavior or acts stay away from them that is better for you if you want to succeed those of you who have double loyalty you say you are a muslim calling on allah every day allah akbar but at the same time you are going there to pay loyalty to a fetish of there something that cannot even talk to you that has no life it's motionless it's speechless it's sightless no ears you say that's the one you are going to listen to. That's the one you are going to say, you know what, I'm going out today, I need good luck. What kind of good luck? It's a sin. Stay away from them. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah al hajj Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, stay away from the filth, from the dirt, from the awfulness of idol worshiping and stay away from false witnessing from lying stay away from it these are the things that will make you live life of suffering and that's why what Allah says those who follow the other people who do that they definitely will struggle and what about those who do not worship these things they tell you they don't worship them they don't have them in their homes but i'm a muslim and yet when a difficulty comes or some challenges come, you find such people going around to consult the worshippers of these things. They are as guilty as those who worship the things. So as a Muslim, you should not be seen to be frequenting the homes of juju makers, jadu makers, babalawos, marabus, and all those people who are worshipping idols, who are sacrificing to idols. You should stay away from them. Remember that it was as a result of this Worshipping of idols that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among other reasons, destroyed the people of the past. Kaumu Noi, Kaumu Hud, Kaumu Lut, Aswabun Aika, Kaumu Fraun. They were all destroyed, among others, because of idol worshipping. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wakula Akhazna, the Zambi, Family Homan, Arasarina, Alehi, Hasiban. How many homes are casa to home sway her? How many homes are casa to now be healing arad? How many homes are garakana? Oh, my car now, la only as lemo home, or like a car no home, ah, for so home, as lemo. Allah say among them are people with destroy with tornado, twisting winds. Others with destroy with violent cry that flip the cities around by way of an earthquake. Others with destroy by asking the earth to open up and swallow them, and others will destroy by the use of water. We didn't wrong them, they wronged themselves by worshipping idols. Yes, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let's stay away from idol worship. We want you to know that this is a very big sin, and therefore stay away from it. We need happiness in our lives. You know why you must stay away from it? Because whether you like it or not, you will definitely receive punishment for it in this world and in the other. It will make you take one step forward, two steps back. If that's what you want in life, hang on to it. You will see what will be the outcome. But in sincerity, we are calling on you to stay away from idol worshipping and whatever is associated with idol worshipping. It's not going to help you. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala was quoted as saying, Lying Nobody will enter Jannah if you have an atom of shirk in your hand. Yes. Yes. As small as an atom of it, you're not going to enter Jannah. You're not going to find good life in this world if you are engaged in such things. Those who do not believe, let them do whatever they want to do. So they already know. That's why the ayah we quoted just now last says, those ones have already lost hope about the Akira. They have lost hope about your deen. They don't look forward to anything with Allah. That's why they are engaging them. But you say you are a Muslim? Then why should you be involved in such a thing? When you know that Allah is the one you believe in and you are going back to him and he will give you a better life. Yes. They are doing all that because they have lost hope in the Akira. 
The same way the disbelievers have lost hope in the life of those who have died. Yeah, they think they have died and that's the end. They won't come back. They won't be raised to accountability. No, they are lying. My dear brothers and Islam, it is a very serious offense. Let us be careful. Let us try and make our lives happy by doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do. If we do so, definitely we'll be happy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take shaitan away from our life. Take our life far away from shaitan. Run Allah will be amdi. Run Allah will be amdi. 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 Allah will be amdi.